What's going on? It's Zuck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the brand new M4 powered 13 inch iPad Pro. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers, so if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified when any of my up and coming videos get uploaded. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this iPad Pro was Geekbench 6 and I started off by running the CPU test and when running this test I got a single core score of 3788 along with a multi-core score of 13216. I also ran the metal compute test from Geekbench 6 and when running this test I got a score of 53870. The next benchmarking application that I ran on this iPad Pro once again came from Geekbench. However, this set of tests are designed to test the machine learning capabilities of the M4 chip found in this iPad Pro. So when running the CPU test, I got a score of 4,720. When it comes to running the GPU test, I got a score of 6,802. And when it comes to running this test through the neural engine, I got a core ML score of 9,455. I then wanted to test the 10 core GPU in this M4 iPad Pro. So I then ran a number of different graphics tests and started off by running GFX Bench Metal. Now the good thing with GFX Bench is it runs a number of different tests which vary from both on and off screen at a range of different resolutions from both higher and lower levels of intensity. Now in the interest of saving some time I have calculated the average across these categories but as always I will show you each individual result. So the average frame rate that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 207.76 frames per second and the average I got for the lower level was an average frame rate of 431.82 frames per second. The next set of graphics benchmarks that I ran came from 3 Mark, and the first test that I ran was the wildlife test. Now when running this test I got a maxed out score with it also averaging a frame rate of 119.9 frames per second. So I then ran the wildlife stress test and when running this test I got a score of 10,020 and my lowest score was 10,020. I then ran the wildlife extreme test and when running this test I got a score of 8299 with it also averaging 49.7 frames per second. So if you compare this to the 11 inch iPad Pro which scored 7860 with it also averaging 47.1 frames per second you'll find that the score and the frame rate between both the 11 and the 13 inch ipad pro sit at around a five percent difference i then ran the wildlife extreme stress test and when running this test the highest score that the 13 inch m4 ipad pro scored was 7061 with its lowest score being 5788 so the interesting takeaway here is the best score between both the 11 inch and the 13 inch iPad Pros were fairly similar with there being less than 100 points between them. But where things get quite interesting is when you account for the lowest scores between them. With the lowest score the 11 inch iPad Pro scored being 5009 whereas the 13 inch scored 5788. So, so you can clearly see that there is a big difference between the thermal capabilities of the 11 inch and the 13 inch iPad Pros. I then ran the Solar Bay test and with this test I got a score of 12,548 with it scoring an average frame rate of 47.7 frames per second. And once again there is a massive difference between the figures that I got with the 11 inch over the 13 inch model with the 11 inch model scoring over 20% less in terms of performance compared to the 13 inch model both in terms of its score and the frame rate as the 11 inch model scored 9971 with it scoring an average frame rate of 37.9 frames per second and when running the solar based stress test 
the best score that this 13 inch iPad Pro scored was 11,995 with its lowest score being 9,970. Now if we contrast that to the 11 inch model, its lowest score was 7,992. So once again, there is a clear difference between the load and thermal capabilities of the 13 inch over the 11 inch model. And I would strongly suggest that if you are looking to play any games or do any sort of 3D work, that you might be better off in the long run going for the 13 inch model over the 11 inch model. Using iMovie, I then exported a 4K video project that had a length of 5 minutes and 29 seconds. And when using the 13 inch iPad Pro, it took the exact same time as the 11 inch model, taking 3 minutes and 14 seconds to export. I also used Final Cut Pro to export the same video project and when exporting at a resolution of 1080p, that's full HD, it took 41 seconds which is pretty much the same as the 42 seconds of the 11 inch iPad Pro and when exporting as a 4K project it took 2 minutes and 33 seconds which is exactly identical to what we've seen with the 11 inch model. I then ran a Wi-Fi network speed test and with this I got download speeds of 494 megabits per second with upload speeds of 102 megabits per second. I then ran the Jazz Disk Speed Test and when running this test I got sequential write speeds of 1537.54 megabytes per second with sequential read speeds of 1662.34 megabytes per second. I also got random write speeds of 31.3 megabytes per second and random read speeds of 48.71 megabytes per second. I also used Adobe Lightroom to export 100 raw GH5 images and you'll find that this iPad Pro took 1 minute and 6 seconds to complete this compared to the 11 inch model which took 1 minute and 26 seconds to complete. I then ran the Antutu graphics benchmark and when running this test I got a score of 2,359,566. I then ran the Antutu storage test and when running this test I got sequential read speeds of 1543.3 megabytes per second with sequential write speeds of 1736.2 megabytes per second. I also got random read speeds of 120.2 megabytes per second with random write speeds of 48.9 megabytes per second. I also ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and got scores of 96,901. I also ran the Affinity Photo benchmark. When running this, I got a vector multi CPU score of 3224 with a raster multi CPU score of 982, which gave us a combined multi CPU score of 962. So be sure to follow me over on X and Instagram. I'll leave those linked down below in this video's description. Be sure to subscribe, clicking that bell button to be notified when my up and coming videos get uploaded. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.